this video I'll tell you how to generate equivalent fractions. So let's look at the first example, 2 over 5, and how do I generate another equivalent fraction uh, to 2 over 5. So what we're going to do is we'll multiply something in the denominator and numerator to generate more, more uh, equivalent fractions. So let's start uh well two is the simplest example i can give you so let's uh, let's multiply this fraction by two over two now why i'm multiplying the fraction with two over two is uh basically i'm multiplying the fraction with one because two over two is equivalent to one so i'm not changing the value of my fraction but i'm just multiplying this by one and I'm trying to generate more equivalent fractions so now I'll get, when I multiply, now this is simple multiplication of fractions. You have to multiply the numerators and then you multiply the denominators. 2 times 2 will give you 4 and 5 times 2 will give you 10. Now, uh, let's look at another example. 3 over 4. So you can pick any number and try to multiply it and you can generate more than one equivalent fraction. Like suppose if you have to if you have to generate more equivalent fractions, let's let's uh, look at this example again. So two over five, I have already multiplied with two over two and generated a new fraction. Now I can multiply this by three over three, or you can pick any other number. You can multiply this by ten. You can multiply this by fifteen. You can multiply this by twenty five. It's up to you. But I like to take a smaller number so that I don't have to worry about the calculation. It will be easier. So make your life simple by choosing uh, small numbers. Now, uh, multiply the numerators and the denominators. 2 times 3 will give you 6. And 5 times 3 will give you 15. So you have successfully generated two equivalent fractions to 2 over 5. The first fraction is 4 over 10 and the second one is 6 over 15. Now let's look at another example, 3 over 4. Now this time, as I've already multiplied 2 and 3, now this time I'll multiply it by maybe 4. Let's multiply this by 4. So I will multiply this by 4 over 4. Now you have to always make sure that whatever you're multiplying in the numerator, you have to multiply the same number in the denominator so that you are just multiplying the fraction by 1 and not changing the value of the fraction. This is equal to, you multiply the numerators and the denominators. So 3 times 4 will give you 12, and 4 times 4 will give you 16. Now let's generate one more equivalent fraction to this. So 3 over 4, we'll write that again, and let's multiply this time by 5. So I'll multiply this by 5 over 5, and I can get 3 times 5 will give me 15, and 4 times 5 will give me 20. So I've got two different fractions. One is this and the other one is this. Now, uh, you can pause this video and try these examples uh, and see if you get the same answers. Uh, well, you might not get the same answers because uh, you'll multiply it with different numbers and I'm going to multiply that by different numbers. Now, let's multiply this by 2 again. So, I'll multiply this by 2 over 2. So, I will get 2 times 2 will be 4 and 6 times 2 will be 12. Now let's leave it here. Uh, we just, uh, we don't want to generate any more equivalent fractions for this. Let's look at this example. 5 over 8. Now when I have to generate equivalent fractions, I can multiply this by any number, but this time I'm picking 5, so I'll multiply this by 5 over 5. 5 times 5 will give me 25, and 8 times 5 will give me 40. So this is how you generate the equivalent fractions. Now let's uh, look at the other examples. These are find the missing numerators and denominators. So you have to find the missing numerators and denominators. So let's see. The first one is 2 over 8. And the equivalent fraction to, these are the two equivalent fractions to 2 over 8. And we have to, we have to identify, we have to figure out what is our numerator in, in both the cases. So let's try to uh, solve it. 8 times what will give me 16? Because you're always multiplying something to get the equivalent fraction. So what do you multiply 8 to get 16? Well, the answer is simple. You multiply 2 in 8 to get 16. So if you multiply 2 in the denominator, that means you have to multiply the same thing with the numerator. Remember, you just, you, you're multiplying the uh, same number in the numerator and denominator. So if you multiply 2 here, in the denominator, you have to multiply the same number in the numerator. So 8 times 2 is 16, and 2 times 2 will give you 4. 
So this is our first equivalent fraction. Now let's talk about the second one. Now for the second one, uh, you have to you have to make sure that you have to multiply something to this, not to this fraction. This is the another equivalent fraction, but you will not multiply something in this to get this. You always have to go back to original question. You have to always go back to original uh, fraction and multiply something to that. Now, 8 times 1 is 56. 8 times 7 will be 56. So if you multiply 7 in the denominator, that means you ha also have to multiply 7 in the numerator. So let's multiply. 2 times 7 will give you 14. So we have solved our first example. Let's move to our next example. Again, we have to find the missing numerators. Now, 3 times what will give you 18? Well, 3 times 6 will give me 18. That means if you have multiplied 6 in the denominator, you have to multiply 6 in the numerator. So 2 times 6 will give you 12. Now, again, what do you multiply in 3? To, give, to get 12. You have to make sure you're multiplying to your original fraction, not to this, not to this fraction. You're multiplying it to original fraction. 3 times what will give you 12? 3 times 4 will give you 12. So that means you have to multiply 4 in the numerator. So 2 times 4 will give you 8. Let's move to the next example. Now, this time they have given you one numerator and the other denominator. Now let's see how can we solve it. So again, 1 times what will give you 7? 1 times 7 will give you 7. So if you have multiplied 7 in the numerator, you have to multiply 7 in the denominator. So 2 times 7 will give you 14. Now you have 12 in the denominator in this fraction. 2 times what will give you 12? 2 times 6 will give us 12. That means we have to multiply 6 in the numerator as we have multiplied 6 in the denominator. So 1 times 6 will give me 6. This is another equivalent fraction. Now let's uh, move to our last example. 5 times what will give you 10? 5 times 2 will give you 10. That means if you have multiplied 2 in the numerator, you have to multiply the same thing in the denominator. So 7 times 2 will give you 14. Now, uh, 7 times what gives you 42? 7 times 6 gives 42. That means you multiply 5 by 6. So 5 times 6 will be 30. 